welcome at the beginning of Holy Week to worship at Annan St. Andrew's Church. This Palm Sunday 2021, as we go on a journey throughout Holy Week, today, Good Friday, as we go from the entry into Jerusalem to the cross, we go together and we go with Christ in our minds, in our thinking, and in our worship. Let us pray. Lord God, as we walk in our minds, in front or behind, as we stand and watch from the side, as Christ enters Jerusalem and the end is imminent, we stand by and we observe as every idea of God is broken and destroyed, a golden calf of empty promises and out of the emptiness and in its midst, in the emptiness itself, you emerge and we know nothing and can know nothing except for this. We gather then at the beginning of Holy Week to hear the story, willing to enter the story, to become the story in some way which is beyond our comprehension. And we return as bewildered as any crowd, as triumphant worshippers are silenced, as cynics are silenced, as everything anyone ever understood is turned on its head, 
the death of everything in which we hoped and believed, and the beginning, the emergence of something new. In our brokenness and our sickness, our disappointment with ourselves, and our shame, we come this day and we gather with the broken, the sick and the disappointed, and in the darkness we wait for the light, for our God to arrive. Amen. Thy tribute bring ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven. Who like me his praise should sing? Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise the everlasting King. Praise him. today is from the New Testament and we're back in the Gospel of Mark, reading chapter 11, verses 1 through to 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethagy and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village ahead of you and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street as they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead... And those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. 
Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Palm Sunday is the beginning of Holy Week and is, for us as well as Jesus, the beginning of a journey which commences with the entrance to Jerusalem and ends with the cross and the tomb. It is a dramatic journey because Mark's Gospel presents Jesus as a king and then as a corpse. You have the journey from first to last, greatest to least, light to darkness. And there is much we can learn from this, more perhaps than we may at first think. And between now and Good Friday and next Sunday, Easter Day, I want us to go on that journey together and simply to watch what happens to Jesus and what we are in being invited into, because this is not simply a report, a narrative, a story about Jesus. It is an invitation to us which is as dramatic and life-changing as was Jesus' call to the fishermen to follow, his invitation to the rich to become poor, and to the experts in the law to recognize that the only way to keep the law was to break it. Between Palm Sunday and Good Friday, all of the rules are broken. And our theology, our thinking about God, our belief, is exposed as useless and without meaning or purpose. And yet, if we can get into the right place, into the right state, then we can see God. And you cannot help, I think, but recall on Palm Sunday as Jesus enters the city, as he emerges into the city. And Mark tells us this, and not much more, that people spread their cloaks on the ground along with branches and went ahead and followed, and the crowd had Jesus at its center. And the crowd was shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. And that crowd must have worked out pretty quickly that none of this was going to happen, or certainly not as they expected. And they deserted Jesus by the end of the week. You can't help remember, but remember and recall as you read that, that Jesus' proclamation way back in the first chapter of this gospel, Mark's gospel, that his first words as he emerged from the wilderness and began his public ministry were to tell us that the kingdom of God was close and then that mistranslated word, repent, which really means open your, your eyes and see things as they really are, see the whole picture, see the bigger picture. His first words were effectively this. The kingdom of God is near. See things as they really are and believe it. You recall those words and you look at what is happening here in, on Palm Sunday, the events we recall on Palm Sunday, to be honest, it is very difficult to fit any kind of theology into this. So you realize that in order to see what is going on, we're going to have to take a different approach. We're going to have to look in a different way. We're going to have to look through different eyes. And Jesus' invitation to his followers was to follow him, to his disciples was to follow him. 
and in the process to be transformed into something completely different. And here you have the impassioned crowds and very little mention apart from the fact that he was entering the city and riding a colt. Very little mention of what Jesus was doing or how he was reacting. As if he is not reacting. As if he is unmoved by the adulation. As unmoved by the adulation as he is by the abandonment a few days later. And I don't mean unmoved in the sense that he was an unfeeling automaton, but unmoved, never diverted from his path, never distracted from the journey that he's on. And the disciples remember, right at the beginning of his ministry, we're told, instructed, invited, follow me and I will make you into something different. So it's not just Jesus' journey. It is ours. If we follow, we need to watch, and we need to learn from the teacher, and we need to follow. What do we mean, though, follow Jesus that's one of those things, that, one of those expressions that we use without thinking, I'm following Jesus. You need to follow Jesus. What does it mean? It means do as he does. Do what he does. And go where he goes. And Jesus by this stage is being pulled towards the cross. He doesn't resist it. It may by this stage have been inevitable. But he welcomes it and he abandons himself to it. The cross no longer has any power. Death no longer has any power because he goes to it willingly. And there is from now until the end of the story no supernatural power, no divine rescue, Nothing out of the ordinary. And the only striking thing is that Jesus goes forward from this point on, doing exactly what he instructed his followers to do. He lets go. He lets go of everything to which I would cling and to which I imagine you would probably wish to cling until the final thing to which the ego, ego clings and grasps and holds on is surrendered. And that is life. And I really want to say here that this is God, here is God, and we do say that. That when everything else is stripped away, given up, taken from Jesus as he does not resist, all that remains is God in all his fullness. That God very definitely is in Christ. That when we look at Jesus, we see God as God is. When there's nothing left, we see God. I want to say all of that because I think all of that is here but it doesn't really mean anything. This is the problem. We talked a few weeks ago about grounding, how that's so important in Mark's gospel. If there's an encounter with God and it's immediately grounded. Jesus does not show us God as if God is a supernatural or any kind, anything kind of spectacle at which we can marvel. Instead, he shows us what to do. Do this, and you will experience God as I experience God. 
Those who asked Jesus what they had to do to inherit eternal life, which meant experience God, to be in communion with God now, were always told to do something to make a change. And it is now that we have to keep coming back to Mark chapter 1, remembering that the thing is a single book. The Gospel of Mark is a single book. Nothing's wasted. Nothing's unrelated to anything else in it. Come, so we come back to Mark chapter 1, the beginning of Jesus' public ministry. The kingdom of God is near. But you have to change how you are looking and you have to change how you are seeing things. You have to change how you're seeing everything before you're going to see it. And Jesus never invites us to believe in something we haven't experienced. The kingdom of God is near. Change how you see and believe what you see. It's not believe in something you can't see. And to do that, to do what is meant by that word repent, see the full picture, you have to follow. Jesus is saying, you have to come on my journey, follow me. And how do we do that? Well, look at the detailed instructions which are there in the Gospels. But for now, just let go. Let go and keep letting go. If there's something you want to keep, lose it. If there's something to which you are clinging, release it. And there is, if there is something that you want to hold on to, then let it go. The clue might be in what is repeated more than once. If you want to keep your life, then lose it. So where does this take you? To death and resurrection is the answer. That is what Mark's gospel is telling you. That's what it's inviting you into. It's your journey, not just Jesus. If you want to see God, stop looking and see everything differently. Start doing everything differently. Don't try to see Christ in your neighbor. That is the kind of sentimental, sugary sermon stuff that ministers come out with. I use that kind of stuff all of the time, and it means absolutely nothing at all. Don't try and see Christ in your neighbor. Don't tell other people or kid yourself that you can see Christ in your neighbor. What you see is your neighbor. So feed your neighbor if he's hungry. Give her water if she's thirsty. Stop judging her and stop judging yourself. Get out of that mentality completely. Here in Jesus' journey from Palm Sunday to Calvary, king to corpse is your journey. If you want to enter into consciousness of and communion with God now. Because that is what Jesus, that is what the gospel is offering you. Basically start dying now. Die while you are alive. You don't believe yourself into any of this. You walk your way into it. Hardwired into human beings, since the beginning of any evidence we have of human beings, going back to the earliest cave art, is the desire to see pattern, to create patterns, to see patterns. They comfort us. Patterns help us make sense of things, help us to understand what is really going on. Jesus shows us a pattern in everything that he teaches, does, instructs, says. And that is what Mark's gospel is drawing out here. We have in many ways a distillation of everything that is taught. The Jesus who taught his disciples that the kingdom of God belongs to the poor rides into the temple as a king, rides into Jerusalem as a king, heads for the temple, and in the space of a few days loses everything that he had. And it is a story from then on in of simple, 
and single-minded obedience. There is a pattern. It's a relentless pattern. It's a practice. Because you see the pattern in what you're instructed to do. You see it in what Jesus does again and again and again. He does it. He talks about it. He teaches it. He acts it out. It is letting go. Jesus' strength and the power of Jesus' position is that nobody can steal from him because if you ask for it, you can have it. If you hit him, he will not resist. He will not retaliate. If you hurt him, he will forgive you. If you cry, Hosanna, he will neither be swayed nor distracted. He is on a journey, and he is inviting you onto that journey. He is showing you. The one who told us that the kingdom belongs to the poor becomes the poor. He becomes the hungry. He becomes the naked. He becomes the thirsty. He is the sick and the broken. He is the homeless. He is the imprisoned and the convicted. He is the mocked, the forsaken, the exiled, the outcast, the despised, the stranger, the enemy. As Jesus said, whoever serves me must follow me and where I am, there will be my servant also. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord God, as we enter Jerusalem with Jesus of Nazareth, help us to be swayed neither by the crowds who line the way, nor by the absence of people and support as we get closer to the cross. As we stand with the crowds as Jesus of Nazareth enters Jerusalem, help us not to seek you in the crowds and support the popularity and the acclamation, nor to think that you have gone by the time we reach Calvary. As we move in our minds and follow Jesus of Nazareth as he enters Jerusalem, help us not to jump to the end of the story, to be dazzled by the light of Easter, and thus to miss the truth of the whole of this journey. Lord God, help us to see you in this. Help us not to build images of you out of our expectations and our fear, our hopes, or our own ambition. And Lord God, as we watch Jesus enter Jerusalem and his popularity fade as he fails to act like a Messiah, as he is not rescued, by the kind of God we want. Help us to be prepared to see you in the poor and the hungry, the lost and the lonely, the powerless and the excluded. In silence, as we remember how Jesus was abandoned and forsaken, we pray for those who may feel that they have been abandoned by you and who are very often abandoned and ignored by us, the church. The bereaved, the poor, the dying, the lonely, those who are excluded because of sexual orientation or status. Lord God, hear us as we pray in silence. Lord God, as we watch Jesus enter Jerusalem, we see you in a different way, not only in what looks like absence, but in those whom we and the world have forsaken. This week, we commit to serving our neighbor, to loving our enemies, and to forgiving those we believe have wronged us. Amen.
you go from here. Go in the peace of God. May the blessing of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and with those whom you love in the world and in heaven, this day, tomorrow, this Holy Week, and forever. Amen.